After completing assembly, it came time to fill the reservoir and run the pump. A bunch of us got together in one of the labs here for the loop's maiden run to check for leaks. When you build a loop like this, you expect the leak to be like an arterial spray and splash all over your hardware, destroying everything, but it doesn't quite work that way. Since the coolant isn't under pressure, leaks just drip. You want to run the pump without actually powering on the entire system, so that if there are leaks, they can be dried off of the hardware without damaging anything. I connected the coolant's pump to an open test platform's Molex chain. The pump itself will also be a lot louder until you fill not just the reservoir, but the loop with coolant, which means continually adding coolant, and having a lot of towels handy. Finally, you want to rock the system back and forth a little bit to work the air out of the loop, and running it overnight isn't a bad idea. The system is now complete and powered. In retrospect, I'm not sure I would have gone with the EKWB blocks for the radion or the processor, and I would have used a thinner 140mm radiator for the front. The red LED airflow fans aren't quite as efficient as our static pressure fans, but they do look nicer, and this system is meant to be both functional and a showpiece. The red coolant also turned out to be more pink. Stock thermal performance is fantastic, though, with the ordinarily toasty AMD Radeon R9-290X not breaking 45 degrees Celsius under the Tomb Raider benchmark. As a whole, this build was a fantastic learning experience and proof that a powerful, functional custom loop can be installed in the Obsidian 250D.